Hey, my name's Peter Coffin, and I'm gonna tell you why movies suck now. Today I'm going to introduce you into an idea called Wikipediaitis. Wikipediaitis is the reason why movies suck and they're bombing so badly. What is Wikipediaitis, though, Peter? Well, I'll tell you what it is right after I tell you what it's not. Tons of people are asking the question, why do movies suck? Why are they all bombing? One of the theories is that movies have gotten too woke and that Kathleen Kennedy has made them gay and lame. Now, I'm not going to say this is completely untrue, but it's not why movies are bombing. Trust me, I am the author of a book that says wokeness is an ideology that justifies the ruling order of capitalism. It's not a small book. I put a ton of work into this, got 230 plus citations in it. I have an incentive to tell you that it's wokeness, and I'm telling you that it's not. I'm also not saying that it's not wokeness, but it's wokeness as much as it is anti-wokeness. These things both are part of it. But neither of them is the main part. Like, you can talk about how bad a woke-looking movie is all day long, and you're completely right, but Dave Chappelle's The Dreamer, it sucks ass, and as much as a lot of people watched it, you know how many people are talking about it a couple weeks later? None. Zero. You know why? Because it sucks. Just like the woke shit sucks. No, the reason goes well beyond progressive or regressive politics. The partisanizing actually isn't the main goal. The partisanizing actually services the thing that I'm going to talk to you about today. In 2018, I put out a book called Custom Reality and You. It's a little thinner, has less citations in it. But probably the thing that I've talked about more than anything else in this book is the concept of what I call cultivated identity. It's basically a more class-conscious version of Hans George Moeller's profilicity. I had a lot of those same observations, but I observed that it was a product of class. You see, you don't cultivate your identity. When I say cultivate, I mean like a farm. Yourself is the dirt. They cultivate your identity. In a post-neoliberal capitalism in which uh, the market fetish is just an assumption, then the commodity, the consumer item, is what is placed at the center of identity. We define ourselves by what we consume. You say, who are you? You start listing things that you like. I like Always Sunny. That's a big thing for me. Those consumables are also placed at the center of community. What we call community now is more or less fandom, a bunch of people who like the same things. Not a bunch of people who live in the same place, work together, and coexist, but rather people who fully agree that this thing is the best thing. In this book, I refer to it as somewhere to belong, uh, but it's really just fandom. And that somewhere to belong is where the partisanizing comes in. As a member of a fandom, it's your responsibility to advocate and market on behalf of the thing at the center of the community. Because if there's more fans, then there's more market incentive to make more content, and if there's more content, then the fandom has a reason to be an active community. Like, honestly, it's sad as shit when you think about it. To keep that advocacy going, active, engaged, it's better to partisanize it, to split issues across the line that isn't class and give people something to argue about. And that means you could split the fandom red or blue, or you could split the fandom Team Edward versus Team Jacob. It doesn't really fucking matter. What matters is that there's a subjective argument that can't end, and that conflict drives continual endless engagement. So, Wikipediaitis. It is the phenomenon that the energy of creative production is diffused into. People have grown up in this world of cultivated identity. That includes every film director making these big tentpole franchise movies that aren't as good as they used to be. Now, aside from overtly political stuff, like wokeness, what's being attributed mostly is a lack of originality. And that's probably the biggest reason why all this plagiarism controversy has been able to take hold so fervently. It's because it's an explanation for why everything is so crap now. But the problem is the thing that sucks is an ideology that has inspired most of their behavior. The film directors, the showrunners, the story creators have all grown up in this era of cultivated identity. You, as an everyday person, 
as much as your life is important on an individual level, in terms of how everything works, you aren't. It's not your fault for reading Wikipedia. Simply consuming information off wikis is not the problem. The problem is that somebody with the mindset that knowing more makes you more authentic and also makes you more equipped to advocate on behalf of the franchise or the film or whatever, that mindset makes the film itself into a wiki entry. And it doesn't have to be a film, obviously. It can be any kind of narrative, any kind of fiction. But it transforms these films from wanting to say something about society to wanting to fill it with as much information as is possible. From a metrics standpoint, more of something is worth more, right? And from an authenticity standpoint, more specific references to what is canon is more authentic, right? So making a long film that is filled with an explanation of everything is a better film, right? If we leave things up to the imagination, why that means there can be argument about what canon is, and we don't want that. Definitive, unambiguous canon is insurance that later adaptions will remain faithful to my work. Canon is my legacy as a filmmaker. And that's what movies are all about. They're not about the imagination of the audience and trusting them with thinking. It's not about acknowledging that they are also creative beings who have the ability to fill in the blanks in interesting ways themselves. The line between the creator and the consumer is stark. The stuff that the creator makes, why that's the real stuff. And the consumer, I guess, could make fan art or fan fiction if they wanted, but it's inferior and it's certainly not real. It's not canon. The implications within those stories don't matter. They aren't the real creators. They shouldn't have the control over the thing. Obviously, I'm not advocating for IP law or anything. It's really just about ethics. Boy, it's been about a decade since it was just about ethics. Well, August 2024 is the 10 year anniversary of Gamergate. And if you bring that shit up and you take one of the defined sides, you're a sucker. It's not about ethics in games journalism. And the Puritan feminism of the other side is just another means to exert control over the types of things that people see. That's why it's so important that it's not about IP law, it's about ethics. It's just the desperate cry of the left anarchist trying to tell themselves that they aren't the same thing as Ayn Rand. But they are. It's the same thing to them as abolish the police. They simply want to deformalize enforcement and make it into a market mechanism. The fetishization of the market, the religion in which the invisible hand is the deity, presents itself once again. When they make a Star Wars movie or they make a Marvel movie, it's not even that it's soulless or corporate. It's that the people making the movies, the people trusted to make the movie, aren't making films. They're making wiki entries. And the more extensive they are, the longer they are, the more information there is in them, the better they are, right? The reason we're calling that soulless and corporate isn't because corporations are involved, although they're certainly the driving force. It's just that we're not actually investigating it. What is soulless and corporate? In this case, it's executives picking people to run what they're making who clearly have this consumer mindset. It's also why they keep announcing movies and not making them. It's because the people making them don't know what they're doing. The people making these films either obsessively read wiki entries or obsessively write them. That is, to them, life. But that's not what life is. Not for everybody who goes and sees these movies. 
I started making these 15 minute simple videos because I saw an SNL thing that to me perfectly crystallized why everything was so meta. It's vertical integration. I talked about media that is about making media and how I really don't like that. And I talked about Alan Wake as an exception to that because it talks so much about how a story is created. Alan Wake obsessively talks about stories as these living things that can't finish unless they're correct. And a lot of people probably take that as, oh, he's trying to make the best thing he can. But I don't think that's what it's really about. I think that it's actually about how a story is about creating a world and then having things happen in it that would actually happen given those conditions. If the exposition is done correctly, you should have a pretty good idea as to where the movie is going to land. Because it's about establishing conditions, tension around those conditions, and then eventually relieving that tension. That doesn't require you to know everything that's going on. It doesn't even actually require everything to make perfect sense. It certainly doesn't require you to understand all of the lore. It doesn't require you to connect back to some obscure thing that somebody wrote in a novelization of something 25 years ago. Wikipedia-itis is about not making films. It's about making a different thing. And, and again, wiki articles aren't bad. It's not bad to have a wiki about a thing. That's good, actually. There's nothing wrong with that. They're just not films. That's not what a film is. That's not what a narrative is. Yes, it's important to have a consistent internal world, but that's not the film. Wikipedia-itis is making wiki articles instead of films. It's not saying that films are automatically good or bad. It's not saying that wiki articles are automatically good or bad. But wiki articles are not good as films. I think that's all I have for you today. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, maybe consider becoming a patron. I hope you have a nice day, and thank you very much. Bye-bye.